That's where all of this starts from. And we're going to start today, and we're going to talk about this phrase here. What you dwell in is what you'll dwell on. And what that means is in our minds, that internal voice that we have talking to us all the time, what that internal voice is dwelling in is what it's going to dwell on. And that can dictate the entire tone for not only your day, but for your week, for your month, for your year, and for your life. If we can't get that internal monologue speaking the way it needs to be speaking, it can completely ruin any kind of positive momentum that you have in life. However, we've talked about mindset. We've talked about programming your brain for wins, right? And what you believe you can achieve. And that goes back to the same thing, that if you can program your mind and dwell in words of affirmation, dwell in words of victory, you're going to program your mind to hear those things, and that voice is going to get louder. And as that voice gets louder, you're going to believe that voice. And then you're going to dwell on those things. And it allows you to start identifying those things. They're going to help you achieve the goals that you have set in place. And it all comes down to what's going on between those ears. What's they say? The six inches between your ears is the most important space in the world. Guys, if you don't feed your mind with success, it will rot in mediocrity. The highest achievers in this world, no matter what field they choose to be in, they feed their mind with success. They're looking to other people that are successful. They're looking for positive influences around them. They're not spending their time looking at the negative of the world. And it's real easy to do. It's easier in today's world than it's ever been. With the amount of access that we have to information, I mean, we can get on this thing right here, can't we? And we can get on social media. And there are plenty of people out there that are miserable. And they're sharing all that misery for the world to see. And it's easy to find. And the craziest thing about this is, Rock, whatever you look at, what does it do? It makes you think that way. It shows you more of it, though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That algorithm is programmed to watch you click on and watch you look at. It gives you more. My wife talked me into getting a TikTok a few months ago because she was sharing so many freaking videos, you know, like workout videos or funny videos. She goes, you should just get a TikTok. And finally, I was like, you know what? I'll do it. So I got on there, and on my feed, it turned into Dave Chappelle, Matt Reif, and freestyle rapping, of all things. I was like, that is weird. Why does this guy keep coming up? And then Bryce showed me Theo Vaughn. And next thing I know, I can't put on TikTok. Matt Rife's nowhere to be seen now. And Dave Chappelle I hadn't seen in months, but I can't get away from Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn is up in my business talking about autism all day long. Can't get away from him. But that, that was the things I was clicking on. And that's the same thing in this life. What we click on, we're going to see more of. So when we, we're clicking on the negative things and the negative self-talk, and the things that we don't think we can do, and the things other people told us that we couldn't achieve, and our past trauma and bad experiences, when we keep clicking on those things, we're going to see more of those things. But if we can flip the script on our brain, on that inner monologue, and start clicking on the good things, clicking on those wins, programming our mind, we're going to start seeing more of those wins. We're going to start seeing more of those opportunities. We're not going to be looking at opportunities to fail, but we're going to be seeing those doors open that allows us to walk into those rooms that we want to be in. Guys, make a list of your fears and give yourself the opportunity to turn each of your fears into a positive affirmation. Guys, we all have fears in life. Each of us do. And we've had those fears since we've been little bitty children because of experience that have happened to us or ways we've been programmed by other people in our lives. Fears can be generational. Your parents may have went through experiences that gave them trauma, so they had to deal with that trauma and it gave them fears, right? And then they transferred that fear onto you. That's why they say poverty is a generational curse. 
because people grew up in poverty and all their parents knew was poverty. So they taught them poverty. So they taught them how to live within poverty and didn't give them the mindset to open up their mind to what the possibilities are in the world. They never believed they could achieve it. So they lived and rotted in that mediocrity. Guys, if we can take those fears that we have, because we all have them, and then we can flip those things and turn them into positive affirmations, how can, you not, how can you not win in that way? Because you're taking that unhealthy fear and you're flipping the script on it, right? For every negative, there is a positive. Just like for every positive, there's a negative. Our biggest strengths are usually the things that can turn into our biggest weaknesses. So I'd ask you guys, think about your fears. What are you scared of? What are the things that are holding you back from being everything that you hope you could be? Is it that you think that you're not capable? Is it that you think you're not smart enough? Is it that you've been told in the past that you're not capable of achieving any more than this level in life? Is it because of where you came from? Is it because of something somebody told you? Free yourself from that. Other people's opinions of you is none of your business. But your opinion of you is the most important opinion that you'll ever have to live with.